So one of my least favorite syntaxes is what this video is all about. <laughs> We're going to talk about the concept of the output parameter. Now the output parameter is very, very useful. Uh, a SQL developer who's working with stored procedures regularly is going to use this every single day. Uh, it's so, so, so helpful. <sighs> Syntactically though, man, it is strange. So let's let's do this before we get started let's just kind of review a little bit so far what we've seen is that stored procedures can and we said that they could return result sets to the client we also saw how they could return a return value or a status code back to the caller you know you could indicate whether something was success or failure the return value well we said in Kind of like the, I think it was the second video when we were start, started talking about what we can do in stored procedures is that we can pass values out in the form of variables. I'll probably set it a different way, but that's the concept of an output parameter. Okay. So let me get a piece of paper, and we'll see here. So let's just give us some drawing space here. So output parameters, to say something is an output parameter, somewhat of a misnomer, are normal stored procedure parameters that are marked with the keyword output or out for short. You can use out or output. When you mark a parameter as output, the user can capture the value of that parameter on execution. Ah, I don't like it saying that. It, it, okay, I'm telling you, this is some strange syntax. Okay, well, I'm going to make it actually seem not as strange. I'm going to try to. So let's do this. Um, let's say, sorry, create. Um, proc get member ID from email. Okay. So you're going to pass in the email address. As select member ID from dbo dot member where email address equal email address. Okay, that's a pretty basic stored procedure, right? You pass in the primary key value, it returns to you the email. Okay. So then we could do something like this, right? We could say if we wanted to consume that data as a caller, we could then declare a local variable ID to be an integer. We could then say execute get member from email. Uh, we wanted to pass in the email address equal. I don't know. Is it Michael Scott at LearnItFirst.com? Michael at LearnItFirst.com? I can't remember. Let's go ahead and create this. Okay. And there we go. His member ID is three. Oh, but wait. Did I assign the value of the variable to, I mean, of this to the variable? No. All right. If I just look at ID. I, it's not assigned, okay? So ID is null. How can I assign the value of the variable to be what's coming out of the stored procedure? This is what output parameters are for, okay? So output parameters allow you to capture the output of the stored procedure in a local variable. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to change my code. Okay. So does not use output parameters. Okay. And so as such, at ID cannot easily be assigned the member ID. We would actually have to create a table, execute this, store the result set in a table, and then read from the table to assign the variable. Yuck. 
I don't have time to show you all that, but that's what we would have to do. Um, after our next exercise, we're going to talk about consuming result sets, and you'll see it in that. So we alter the proc to use an output param. So I'm just going to copy. Later proc. Okay. And now, again, the parentheses not required. Let's put our go in here so we can quit whining. But I'm going to define now a member ID and out. Okay. Output, whichever one you want. Okay. They are the same. Now, I need to assign it. I'm, I'm not going to assign it yet. Okay. I'm going to show you this first. So I'm creating this with an output parameter, but I'm not doing anything else with it. Okay. Now, copy, okay. declare the ID. Okay. Now, when I try to run this, it says, wait a minute, you said you, I have a member ID and you haven't provided for that. Okay. So now at member ID, equal ID. <sighs> it's so confusing. I tried to make it simple. I'm so sorry. All right. Is this an input parameter or an output parameter in this syntax? Ask it a different way. How do we, what's the syntax for assigning variables? Variable equal value. Input parameter equals the incoming value. Input parameter equals the incoming value. That's not going to do us any good, is it? Okay. You see it's null. It worked, though. But it says the value is null. Okay. Whew, this is so tough. To capture... The value of an output variable parameter append out or output to the local variable in the stored procedure code, execution code. So here's the local variable. This is the parameter of the stored procedure. I named them different to make it a little bit easier on you. I have to say out. Just like I did when I declared the incoming variable, I have to tell it, no, 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 no. This is not just an input parameter. I want to take whatever the value of this is after the stored procedure has executed, and I want to store it in this local var variable. <sighs> We're going to do a bunch of these, so if, if I just went over your head, it's cool. Now, strangely enough, I don't get a different answer. See, I leave out off. I put out in. <laughs> I'll get the same answer. And the reason is that I created an output variable, output parameter in the stored procedure, but I never assigned it anywhere. Now, watch this. Set member ID equal... 900. Now I am manually setting this to be a literal value in the stored procedure code. This is I'm doing this for effect, not because I would really do this in production. I'm doing this to make sure you understand the syntax. So here we go. Now I'm not going to run it with the output. Okay. Interesting. Alright. Now out. Okay. Passing it in, you see, because we don't have the keyword out here, this is being treated as only an input parameter. In other words, the value of ID prior to the execution of the stored procedure, whatever it is up here. Uh, how about this? I'll, I'll do this. Equals 555. Okay. So we'll do this up here. Because I've made it an input value, we're not capturing what was changed 
in the member ID parameter inside of get member ID from email. This is treated as an input parameter. This is not going to change. It's not being told that it can change. By adding the out, you are making this now an input parameter that accepts whatever this value is first, but then it changes it inside the execution, and so now you actually see the value coming from the stored procedure. This is tricky, man. I know it is. Let's let's append to some notes here. Okay. All output parameters are both input and output. You can have an input only parameter, but not an output only. However, most of the time, by convention, an output parameter is just that, output only. Okay. Just because you could use it as an input, we do not. We generally treat it as an, only, as an output only parameter. All right, let me come down here. Let's... Um, play some more with this one. Okay, so I'm going to alter again. Give us some space. Okay. So now, member ID parameter. Okay, We're no longer going to declaratively set it here. We're going to assign it. Notice what we're doing. We're declaring this as an output parameter. We are assigning its value based on the results of a query. Email address is unique in the table. This is, this is super, super, super critical, so don't lose me, okay? We're talking about a scalar data type here. This variable, this parameter, those terms can really be used interchangeably at this stage, is a scalar parameter meaning it can only store a single value. When we're running a query and we're doing assignment like this, it is ultra critical that we query on a zero or one row. So I do that. And now, there's no sense in assigning this value here. It doesn't matter. Remember, this could be an it's a defined as an output parameter here. However, we're not looking at what the value of this is inside the stored procedure, are we? We're not saying if the member ID is, that's not used. It's simply going to be overwritten when the code executes. So we come down, and so now you see it being assigned from the query. So if we change this to another person, to Kim, for example, it doesn't matter what the value is. We're simply ignoring that when we call the stored procedure, when it's inside the stored procedure body. It doesn't care. So this is, doesn't matter. Okay. Take the out away, however, and now we get null. Because you've just made this only an input parameter. You have not said store the results of this output parameter in this local variable. It's the out keyword that says take the contents of this parameter after the execution and store them in this local variable. Now to me this is a very confusing syntax. I mean I understand it now and it's not hard for me to write. However explaining it to newbies I always struggle. I've probably gone on too long, and I hope I haven't confused you a little bit more. Uh, but that's what this syntax is for. Now, the question is, when do you use this? And we're going to develop that answer really over the next several videos here, as well as further into Chapter 10. However, I'll give you the basics of it right now. Okay, so let me come back up here. We'll make a note. Okay. Use output parameters when you know you are dealing with single row scalar values. It is faster for the caller to process a single variable 
than to process or to deal with the overhead of managing a result set or a record set, I guess, once you get to that point. So it's just, it's super easy for it to capture if we're dealing just a, let's just say C sharp. If we're working with a SQL command, it's going to be super easy for us to just capture the output of a stored procedure parameter. And that's really, really easy. If, though, we want to process a result set, now we have to bring in a data set, right? We have to populate the data table. It gets to be a lot more overhead. So from a caller's perspective, from the end user, if you know you're dealing with single rows, like you're querying on the primary key, and you're looking at only scalar values, member ID, email address, first name, last name, it's always faster to use output parameters with a stored procedure than it is to return a select statement. Because if you return the, the select statement, now you have to bind to the data set. It's just much more overhead. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop here. Let's come back in the next video and we'll kind of continue with this.